Um, so firstly, I want to apologise for how long I'm taking to put these podcasts out. I mean, I mean, no one really actually cares, but I, I think it's sort of important that I explain myself to the listeners. Um, so uh, as many of my kind of my closer friends know, I, I've i spent the last kind of like few weeks, maybe a month, um, like trapped inside like an enormous brass pig. Mm. Uh, and that's made things very difficult for me. And I, like, I do appreciate the support I'm getting from people. Uh, I've had to take some time off work to deal with it. So now, hopefully, that's in the open. People can be a bit more understanding as to how it's, you know, how that sort of things, uh, how that's working, and how I'm, I'm taking so much time. Like it's hard to get things done when you're inside the uh, a giant brass pig. Inside this metal colossus is Mr. Justin Stathers. How are you, Justin? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not too bad. It's. It's. I'm not going to lie. It's. It's quite hot inside the brass pig. It is. Um, how. Do, how did you come to be trapped in here with me? Okay. Uh, well, that's. Um, the thing is, the, I've been eating quite a lot of slop recently. Okay. Fine. Okay. Um, it's partly a budget thing. Partly just to do with. Uh, what's in the shop i mean there's there's i live quite near it i don't know if you've come across my little uh store which actually is originally comes from an anagram of of, of aldi um but it was, it was it started as a joke originally but now it's uh it's actually a full-blown thing which many people view as sort of indistinguishable from a real supermarket uh but they've got a, a bit of a uh a sale on at the moment of, of, of large multi packs of slop, and to be honest, for a budget conscious uh, man on, on minimum wage like myself, uh, that's too difficult a concept to pass up. But um, all that all that being said, I have been eating a, a lot a lot of it too much possibly, uh, and I think the giant pot brass pig smelled you the slop on me. Smelled the, the slop, slop on- sort of in you know kind of coming out of my pores really. Um, it sensed it and it, it, sensed it, it, and it swallowed it, you up. It, it and devoured me, really. Dev- and now you're inside here with me. And now I'm trapped in a brass pig with you. Um, I've thing. got brass to the left of me. Brass, brass to, to the, the right. right. Here I am, stuck, here I am stuck, stuck in a, in, a inside, giant... Within the, the belly of the brass pig. Of a brass pig. With with your good self, yeah. Lovely, yeah. cool. Um, so just to get started... Um, I do want to clear something up that I didn't address last week or last week or the last time we did a podcast. I just want to clear something up that um, I didn't address last time, last episode. And that is the more sort of eagle-eared listeners among you. Eagles actually... They can't, they're, they're poor, deaf, they're aren't they? Very, uh, they're not deaf, they, they have relatively poor hearing. Okay, you gonna you let me finish? Or? Um, uh, or, go on then, mate, go on. Yeah, fine. Finish, fi- finish your sentence, mate. Fine. You, the more eagle-eared listeners, mm, eagle-eared. yeah, exactly, would, would have noticed that the last time we spoke, I didn't mention my tabard. In fact, the last episode was the only episode of of the ten in which I did not reference my tabard, and there's a very good story behind that, and I'm going to share that with you now, very briefly, if that's all right. If you mm. can, uh, yeah, 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 that's yeah, quite yeah. Right. Shall I? Do you want me to interrupt, or do you not want me to? You can if you want. Okay. I, I'll, 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 you know, we'll see how it's how oh, it goes. All right, let's see how it goes then. All right. All right, mate. Yeah. So I, I, basically, I was in Egypt, mm. um, and I was trying to outwit the Nazis. When because like obviously, have you been to Egypt? I've been on Twitter. Okay, uh, so I was in Egypt. I was trying to outwit the Nazis and yeah, find the like, find like, the Ark of the Covenant. That's usually what I do on Twitter. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. So I, I, I had I had the headpiece of of the staff of Ra, mm, 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 mm. and that helped me find the Well of Souls. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. The, the, uh, where the, the ark the is. Well, yeah. So I've gotten around to opening it. Well, so this well, is well. bit. Yeah. Exactly. So it's got this. I said, well, well, well. Here I am. <laughs> very bless my soul. Bless my soul. Very well. Well, come on. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So, right, right. Let's, let's, sorry, mate. Sorry. 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 All right. There's no. Okay. Sorry. Never mind. Never mind. I was in Egypt. I was trying to outwit the Nazis. Mm. I found the ark of the covenant. I used the headpiece of the staff of Ra to locate the well of souls. 
in much I've, the same way you might use your password to access your account precisely on Twitter. Precisely. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. So I've got this huge, big stone arc in front of me, and I pull the top off the lid, the, st- the lid off the arc. Mm. Like then, you click on it. Yes, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um, and so I pull the the lid off, and on the top it's got like this silver foil. Okay, yes, so it's sort of like well, alum, sort of like the anim, alum aluminium foil, silver like wrap kind of a some sort of a a dish. Yeah, but no, it was more like um, uh, like a. Like, I don't know, like a packet of crisps or like a snack or something, oh, okay. or like so a milk the, top. Slightly more so- the softer, less, you know the to- less crinkly. The top of your milk, you know, when you... you right, okay, yeah, yeah. Soil, freshness. Soil, uh, 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 yeah. So the arc, the arc had been sealed for freshness, right? Yeah. And it had this... So I, I, can't, I couldn't get my nails under it to sort yeah, of peel it off. Of, yeah. Now. Sometimes you get a knife. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't have a knife, but I got it there again, you know, then mm. I do. And I, I opened up really quick, like mm. just pulled it up mm. and it all flicked up and like splashed all over me. Right. Okay. Um, so it just splashed all over my tab bar, basically. And so that's in the... Was that in so, the wash? Yes. So, so if you're going to peel the peel the top off of something that's been just, foil sealed, yeah. just like, you know, if it's the Ark of the Covenant, just, yeah. if it's milk, if it's milk yogurt, whatever it is, just try and do it like open it away from you. Never open towards you if you're going to open away okay, from so you. So you'd reach over to the other side of it and then pull backwards. Exactly, so rather over. than the other yeah. way because it, or it flicks all the arc of the cover. It flick, towards, flicks yeah. all the sort of the angels of death on you. It's these small things. Isn't it's it? a little, yeah. So I mean, when's the when, online safety? Really, yeah, exactly. So when's the when's the last time you had something dry cleaned? Um, right, that was actually. Um, <laughs> it's quite a funny story, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, yeah. So. Um, the thing was, actually, I was uh, I worn a white shirt. Now, I, I I wasn't going to a, you know a fancy event or a job interview or anything like that. I just thought, you know what, I was looking through my wardrobe and I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll wear a lovely crisp, crisp white shirt. Okay, yeah, a, crisp. Like, a crisp white, white shirt. shirt. Yeah, I said to myself, um, and uh, I picked some 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 sort of other trousers and, and, and waistcoat and sort of the. The colour and, and the, the wrinkliness of, of those isn't really relevant to the story. So I was wearing this very crisp white, white shirt. shirt. And um, over the course of the day, it just sort of acquired some some grime. Yeah, as, um, it do, as these things yeah, do. Yeah, abs- absolutely. No, there's nothing to be ashamed of here. Uh, you know, ultimately all crisp white, white shirts, shirts will become... Grubby and grimy. Well, they will. It's just, it's just yeah. that it's the, it's the, it's the wear and tear of working or mm. you know being out and about. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what's, what, sta- what, 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 what yeah. starts the day as a crisp white, white shirt, shirt doesn't end the day as, as a, a crisp, crisp white, white shirt. Um, and that was exactly what happened to this crisp white shirt. Um, and so I thought, you know what? Uh, Washing this in my washing machine and then hanging it out to dry on my sort of laundry horse. Yeah. Not it's not an actual horse. It's um, more of a sort of wire mesh, really. Yeah. Uh, but I think horses tend to be quite damp animals a lot of the time. Um, that won't cut it really. That won't return the the shirt to being crisp white, white shirt. shirt that it was before. Yeah, fine. So uh, I thought I'd take it to the. The dry cleaner. Okay, it's quite funny. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, wow! Um, what a funny story. Absolutely. Lovely. Um, so I know you've got a question or two for me, and if yes. you'd like to ask me a yeah, question, yeah, then you're okay. more than welcome to, because, I mean, I've got some things to talk to you about, you've got something to talk to me about. And... Sure, yeah. Well, just a few, yeah, just a few, few little thoughts on my way um, my way here, actually, just uh, walking down from um, Lawrence Hill. If, any little shout-out to any residents of, of the Lawrence Hill? Yeah, I'll just ask you a question, please. Oh, yes. Just ask you a question. Oh, sorry, I thought that was your question. Right, okay, yeah. No. Um, okay, my first question was, uh, could we... Um, Edit this bit out, please. This bit? Yeah. It's gone. Okay, good. Uh, cool. Um, the second question was, uh, are you are you trying to make me look stupid? <laughs> no. No? No, I, I just, frankly, I just, I, I want to know what you really think. Okay. You know, it's really okay. important to um, me. Honesty, transparency, openness, you know, it's, it's, 
it's it's something that means a lot to that me. That is something that, that many people will say about you. I, I remember when I was introduced to you at... Uh, at uh, Where we work. The... Um, Yes, at the, the establishment at which we currently we are work both employees, for yeah. posterity. Yeah, mm. um, I remember that that I was introduced to you as, as a man who you know he likes to laugh, but at the end of the day, the most important thing you know is that he values integrity, honesty, transparency. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the last, well, I mean, the, the 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 last of this set of questions, this sort of trio, yeah, sort of triple of questions, as it were. Yeah, triple. A sort yeah. of question triple. Uh, is, uh, could you please just tell me what the deal is? Yes, yeah. Um, so I met, um, Stephanie Flanders. She used to be the, um, economics editor for the BBC. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, before, um, I think after Peston, but before, is it Kamal Ahmed who does it now? Yeah, off the top of my head, I think so. Maybe, it could be, I don't know, yeah. Sure, anyway, yeah. Um, I met her uh, a couple of years back mm. uh, and we had a coffee mm-hmm. and um, we were talking about um, uh, different types of plankton mm. that whales like suck mm. up and eat mm. and, and the, you know, and how they like to sleep with their mouth and swim and all the plankton mm. goes in. Uh, and we made a deal that if either of us were turned into a whale, we would sort of take care of them and like feed them plankton and stuff. Mm. So that's that's the deal, basically. Okay. It's like a pact between me and Stephanie Flanders that if, if we ever get turned into an animal, we Fine. will then look after each other in that look animal up. form. Okay. And we, there's like a there's like a like a sign. Um, there's a special like sign that we sort of found that any animal can any do. Animal, any animal at all, even yeah. say for example a uh, snake a, with no arms or legs. A sea cucumber. A sea cucumber. Yeah, there's uh, a special way of like we've 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 we, some obviously a sponge. a sponge. Yeah, various uh, ways of moving or ways of being, mm-hmm. as it were, being. Being some sort of some yeah some some, gest- se- some gestus some, yes, some gestus. gestus some some sense of self yeah. that uh, that these things could mm. um, could demonstrate mm. that then Stephanie or I would know. That we were, in fact, that animal, yeah. and that we would need to be looked after. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the deal. Okay. That's that's the deal. That's a, but you, that's all your questions. A, de- is it? a devil's a devil's bargain. Well, that's part of that triptych. Of okay. Questions. Well, well yeah. let's leave that aside, and then I'll, I'll sort of come to you because I've got sure, a, I've yeah. got a question of my yeah, own. Absolutely, you're an inquisitive man. Well, precisely. So I'm gonna pitch a, a TV show. Okay. For you now. Right. So get right. your sort of producing. So would you like me to sort of offer critical feedback on it? Um. Um. Yeah, so sort of give it critical feedback, but if you could sort of like not you, criticize it, you like just, to, just, like, just agree with you what like I'm saying. Flat, yeah, you let me just sort of flat. Yeah, f- offer you empty flattery regarding your yeah. So like critical feedback, idea, yeah, critical feedback, so but then un- like uncritical feedback, really. Yeah, so it's like critical feedback. Yeah, um, it's like critical feedback. Forming but, sycophantic feedback. Yes, yeah, so it's like critical feedback, but like just tell me what I want to hear. Yeah, so, so yeah. What, we're, what, we're, yeah, what we're looking at here is, is kind of um, kind of like uh, critical feedback. Yeah, so some sort of critical feedback, but but really more of a kind of a, a kind of fawning um, a yes man kind of. Feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, so yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. So you could do that, yes. mate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, you're getting into it. Yeah. So yes. it's got critical feedback, but sort of like not being critical and just agreeing. Just with and it. not really feeding. In fact, essentially, only just feeding you back your own your own. You're an excrement, really. Just well, essentially creating an infinite loop. Well, you haven't heard it yet, so it could be really good. Well, I'm not saying maybe my, maybe my excrement tastes really nice. You don't know. I well, just, I'm, I'm waiting for that. I've never tried it. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, but if, if, even if I didn't like it, then I wouldn't be. You wouldn't say, would you? Say. Um, so I'm going to pitch a TV show to you now. Uh, I I'd like that very much. Okay, it's I called like your, right. I like the fact that you're doing that. Okay, so it's four words. Okay, Charlotte. I, that's a good start. Mm-hmm. Churches. Charlotte Church. So is that church is plural or her, church is her? As in hers. Right. Okay. Yep. Charlotte Church's unwarranted um, searches. Okay. Bear yeah, with me. I okay. Like, uh, I'm enjoying the rhyme. Yes. Exactly what it says on the tin. Okay. Sing a song right at Charlotte Church. Yes. She's walking down the street. Voice like an angel. As well, as yeah, but that's the that's the angel thing. But here's where it, the story really starts. Ooh. She just walks down the road anywhere in yeah. the country, picks her house at random. Mm-hmm. 
breaks down the door, kicks in the door, and just mm-hmm. starts going mm-hmm. through people's things yeah. without the necessary paperwork that you would need yes. to be entitled legally to do that. So it's yes. like an un- it's an unwarranted, unwarranted search. search yeah. So she's just rifling through their stuff, and obviously sometimes the people are in, and sometimes yeah. the people aren't. Mm-hmm. And if they're not in, basically, mm-hmm. she goes through all their stuff, like all their private stuff, yeah, yeah. and she like. Like she like trashes the place and comments on it makes really bitchy comments oh, about it right yeah? nice, yeah. and then we set up like candid hidden cameras and they yeah. come back and they're like oh our stuff's all cool, messed up <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but <laughs> yeah exactly if yeah. they're breaking or whatever yeah. but if they're in right um, yeah. she murders them right and they sort of <laughs> yeah <laughs> she okay. sort of wears their skin and know a bit and then she yeah. just moves on to like another house yeah yeah okay um well uh yeah yeah, you like that, yes. do you? Uh, I mean, is there another yeah. TV show that you would like to see made, or like an existing one that you think can be improved, like Dynasty, but like with chickens instead of people, or um, mm. or uh, mm. Mm. okay. Um, well, I've um, I've often thought that sort of my my my, my mum um, gr- has very grudgingly recently uh, got quite into into daytime television. I think it's a Unfortunately, it's a, a, a necessary byproduct of of um, working freelance and and uh, and retiring, as as my mother did recently. So, just a little round of applause there for my for my own successful retirement. Um, so she's grudgingly been getting into her daytime television a bit. Um, and uh, one one show she does like to watch is is Undercover Boss. I don't think. Is about. that yes? Okay, under, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so that's where currently the show format is that. Uh, a boss, particularly one with a dismissive attitude toward his staff, uh, it has to do one of the sort of low-level jobs within his own company or her own company, uh, and very often we'll tend to see that actually it's a lot more uh, difficult, difficult than, than he than or she he or she had had thought, and, and actually re-enters their old job with a, a better understanding of, of their sort of workforce, what their, what their workforce is going through. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, how would you amend that? How would yeah. you change that? So, I quite like the idea of I quite like the undercover part. Okay, so obviously, you know, there there has been talk about sending a boss not into their own company, but into sort of a hostile country, so maybe North Korea or something like that, and to actually uh, be the boss of a company there. But really, I think that's a bit of a dead end. I think that's it's policy wonk stuff. Nobody's really interested about that. So what I would actually quite like to see is, is bosses sleeping peacefully in their beds. Uh, undercovers. Oh, um, right, yeah, under, undercover, um, yeah, yeah, yeah under, flipping that round, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just sort of, it's a new take. Uh, I think for a new series, what you can do is just... So just watching yeah, business yeah, people sleep. Watch, watching business people sleep, with camera above them. Um, and what I think we, stylistically, I think if you just have the snoring really, really, and if they're not snoring, because there are business people that don't snore. Um, yeah, uh, Alan Sugar doesn't snore. Alan Sugar doesn't, as I understand, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a growing... No, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, when, when I was with him, he didn't snore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we can't go into that because... We'll edit this bit out, yeah. yeah, we'll yeah. edit that bit out because there are respiratory problems. But, um, pause by... Yeah. Uh, but yes, anyway, so, um... Many of them don't. So I think if you take sort of some Hanna Barbera uh, sound effects of a person snoring loudly uh, and obnoxiously, and just have that uh, playing at deafening volumes uh, throughout the entire episode. Um, Does and... it specifically have to be that one company? Uh, it has to be really, Hanna Barbera. Ideally, yes. And if if at some point we can get the current head of Hanna Barbera cartoons to be doing it then I think that would really be a, a real cool to be do be doing to it be do be do, to be do be doing that yes uh, to be do be cause what, what's been Ben's done there is we've actually referred to the famous Hanna-Barbera cartoon Scooby Doo uh, you, it's sort of more of a visual joke really it was a bit of a um, scrappy pun to be honest it was a, quite a scrappy pun absolutely um, and uh, and and uh, I don't really know how to respond to that joke, to be honest. But <laughs> all the same, um, I uh, I like uh, yeah the idea of I think seeing bosses sleeping I think is good because it humanises them and then also uh, it uh, it just sort of makes the viewer feel very comfortable as well. There's nothing more comforting than being awake while you're watching somebody sleep for up to eight <laughs> to nine hours, just watching them in in the same spot in their room while they obliviously snore uh, 
I think that's a, that will give people a real warm feeling, especially if it's in the middle of the day. Shaggy. Yes, shaggy. All right, we'll leave that yes. there then. Okay. So I think I've got one more thing. I mean, have you got anything else that you want to bring up or should we save that for another time maybe? Um, just a very brief question. Um, I saw you uh, the other day, um, it was a Thursday before last, I think it was, uh, out in the um, you know the woods just down that way. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you seem to be um, using a very long roller to paint the treehouse of, well, a treehouse that I happen to know uh, belongs to bully local bully Billy Brongo. Uh, you were whitewashing his his treehouse. Uh, what, what led to? I just wonder what the story of the, uh, that was. Well, um, he um, so I didn't realise that he owned it, Billy Brongo. Mm. Um, but then when I realised that he was the local bully, mm. I thought I'd cover it's... it in some sort of like acrid acid paint thing, oh, so okay. that every time he bullies someone and goes to act his treehouse, he sort of like he burns the he skin inhales. off his. Okay. He inhales it and yeah. burns the skin off skin off his fingers. Oh, very good. Yeah. So like he's like he's you know he now like, no longer okay. has usable hands Fine. because they're sort of down to little nubs. And you can't bully. He can't nubs, bully with yeah. with yeah nubs with nubs. Um, and you know, and he obviously he's got serious respiratory problems. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, I did wonder. I mean, the word, the word in the street was that you had been bullied into it. But I see. Oh, there was a sort of Roger the Dodger esque uh, gimmick, revenge yeah. gimmick. If you remember that was, that 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 Beano, the, the one with he uses the, where he where uses, has been to the chemical factory. Well, he's yeah. been to the chemical factory and then uses that to sort of send anthrax to his to to his yeah, teacher. Yeah, I remember that. Yes, yeah, yes, and she a, sort of yeah, she, uh, she uh, sticks up her own lungs. Yeah, no, no, no that was uh, that was one of my favorite ones because yeah. that felt like what I really liked about the Roger the Dodger cartoons was it always felt like he was doing things that you would you do, you could do if you had you know with relatively simple resources you could copy at least some of Roger the Dodgers and you could send like yeah. yeah. It was hazardous, when, chemicals hazardous chemicals to, to yeah. members of authority. It was when he yeah. started using kind of impossible gadgets or things that, you know, you'd need a sort of £10,000 piece of equipment to do. Oh, it's like, oh, you made a, a car out of some yo-yos exactly, or something like yeah, that. But it's like, no, no, but, but anyone can anyone get hold could of, go like... Anyone the local chemical factory, wherever that might be, get hold of some, you know, hazardous or fully toxic waste. Waste. And lay, lay chemical destruction, sort of, and, 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 you know, breach the Geneva Convention in their own home. Precisely. Yeah. And if you can't breach it in your own home, where can you do it? Well, this is it. I mean, it's... Uh, I mean, as long as you're not doing it out in public, like, you're not, like, in my face yeah, about Yeah, well, if you're not in international waters, as I understand, because it's an international treaty, isn't it? Which means that it applies to international waters. So, actually, I think what a lot of people don't understand is that you can break the Geneva Convention yourself, provided you're not doing it in international waters, as I understand. That's that, I think that's right. I am... Not I'm pretty sure that's the only place you can get away with it. Sorry. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> what? No, no, it's international waters, so international treaties, obviously. Come on, mate. Come on. I know this is a fun, I know this is a light podcast, but you can't, you can't mislead our lovely, handsome, sexy viewers into, listeners, into, into, into believing this kind of rubbish that you're spouting about the Geneva Convention applying to people's own homes. I mean... Well, no, I'm saying you can do it in your own home, but I'm saying you can't do it in your own... You know, like, if the go- a government can do it, but you can do it in your well, home. Like, if I wanted to, you know, gas... And... Yeah, yeah, you do it or something like that. Or, yeah, use, or use, like, chemical gas chemical or, gas. like, you know... Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. But, and, and, but what I'm saying is that you wouldn't be allowed to do that in international waters because it's an international treaty, so you can't do it internationally. You can do it only nationally or locally. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, and like the, as long it's as you, local, yeah. if you if you give the alderman of yes, your you like do, of your parish, like is it alderman void guts is our local local uh, <laughs> yes. alderman? Yes, I remember. alderman void guts. Alderman yeah. void guts. Yes. German name, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yes, I think he's got quite a pronounced English. Accent. He's sort of he's the, he's the one who's he's ill a lot of the time. He's got very bad stomach tr- stomach problems. Yeah, I'm going to be sick. <laughs> I seem to remember was his his speech last year. Oh dear. I'm here in front of you all and I'm going to... I'm going to be sick again. Does anyone have a bucket for me? <laughs> he's... 
<laughs> he is a very good alderman. Oh, he's, yeah, he's, he's great, very good but like... His job, he has very he has like serious a gastroenteritis, yeah. <laughs> he's got like a lining on the inside of his hat. Yeah. So that if you need to be ill, you can be ill he, that. He's Yeah, which he uses almost every time he appears in public, to be honest. Um, I don't know how he's this ill and he's still alive. Like, <laughs> I, he's, he's an admirable man. I mean, he's, he must have, you know... I mean, he he's, may have, he's got guts of glass. He's but 50, but he looks about 90. Just because <laughs> of all the... Ravaged, absolutely ravaged. ravaged. <laughs> I mean, perhaps he was a victim of, a, of of some sort of amusing prank from a, by Roger the Dodger. Ro- yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. don't anger Roger the Dodger. Yeah. Okay. Or you'll end up like Alderman Void guts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. I think we're done there, are we? Yeah. Okay. You did say you had a question as well, but I didn't. Oh, I'm it. fuck it. We'll leave it. Okay. It's fine. All right. Good night, uh, mate. Uh, Bye. Uh, good. Good night, then. God bless. God. God, God bless. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.